Joyce, I'm uh, Brett Perry uh, down here in Sydney and uh, well, I guess you could say uh, you've been in the uh, sailing industry for the best part of 25 years and uh, everything I do is, uh, is based around that. Um, in short, um, I'm currently the global license holder for the brand new Far X2 30 foot double handed offshore boat um, that we've uh, currently uh, been working on since January um, with the Far office in Maryland, Annapolis. And uh, we're currently in the stage of the build of the first two hulls, so we're really excited about that. So the motto of myself is that it is easy to sail a, uh, a double-handed boat with crew. It's not easy to sail a crewed boat double-handed. So it has been my motto all along, and it's a, it's a mar it's a, you could call it a marketing strategy, but it's more along the lines of having a boat that is versatile. So having a boat that uh, you know you can you can go sailing uh, on a Wednesday night and have a beer with your mates, um, or you can put together a serious offshore campaign and not have the expense and logistic problems of of, uh, of a big crew. Um, the systems and the design and the uh, performance of these boats now uh, are well beyond what they used to be. So you know it is an enjoyable experience now to sail a boat of this size. So yes, to answer your question. The, design, the, the, the thoughts that gone into the design of this boat is, is um, very much a, a shorthanded uh, process, but it's something that uh, can be you know, crossed, crossed all levels of all boards of sailing with, uh, with the crew. The rig plan is based uh, very much on a modern style where uh, I call it a Comanche rig. <laughs> Um, now, everyone knows Comanche. Uh, it's an absolute weapon that we all love and, and absolutely adore. Um, and the, if you look at the rig on that boat, it's a long way aft, the boom going you know, all the way to the back of the boat. Therefore, you're able to sail the boat with probably larger headsails um, and uh, you know, increasing the J measurement. But what that also does is enables the boat, once you're at pow uh, powered up, so anything over you know, 12 knots, um, you're going to be looking at moving into your into your furling sailing modes, and uh, so what that does by having a large J is it gives us the opportunity to use, for instance, furling a furling solent or a furling J5 type of setup um, inside a furling code zero. So you're automatically at a very low wind speed getting into furling modes. Um, having done the best part of eight years in the mini circuit in France, uh, every time I got onto the furling sail, I almost uh, was able to go down below and relax um, because I knew that if there was an issue, all they did was pull a rope. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's something that I've done. I pushed hard from the start, and uh, that, that experience of the of the mini transit stuff for me was is, is gold for what we put together here. Um, I think a lot of people probably missed that point that the earlier you can. <coughs> Excuse me. The earlier you can get into a furling mode, uh, the better you are, and that also comes down to the design of the boat. So, if you put, you don't need to be a mathematician to work that out. So we're in it. We're, we're, our design weight is two and a half thousand kilos, um, or two point five tons, and a thousand of that's in the just in the um, in the keel uh, and bulb. So you can see we're very powered up. So we will be at these uh, furling sails very early on. So you know, in twelve knots, we'll be will be powered up and going. And one of the things that uh, has sort of come out of my experience over the years is, is uh, rudder breakages and rudder damage obviously is a race ender, um, or even if you're on delivery, it can really put you in a bad position. Um, so we're having stern hung rudders on the boat. Um, we're not going to have underboat rudders, and we're, the reason we're doing that is because uh, we've been working on a new design where we're having a impact fuse incorporated into the uh, cassette, um, so that if you do hit something, instead of uh, in the case of hitting something and uh, breaking a rudder off or damaging the stock or you know, damaging the bottom of the boat, um, the impact fuse will give way and the rudder rudder will swing up in the in the uh, cassette. Uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable for it'll be a little uncomfortable for uh, for a bit until you get reset. Obviously, you have to slow the boat down and push back in. You'll have new pins and you whack a new pin through. Now, it's not going to be an easy job, but it means that it's not going to be uh, uh, race ending or even worse, life threatening. The 
process uh, of the design of the boat, as you mentioned, um, is has very much been focused toward uh, women sailing on the boat. Um, we, it's obviously uh, um, there's obviously differences in uh, in lots of things in terms of um, strength um, and obviously um, uh, size. I mean, you know, just reaching things, you know, reaching the main ship. Um, the tiller extension, for example, is all thought about for it, the smaller person, um, be it a boy or a girl. Um, so we're covering all bases by making sure that we're not excluding this boat to, uh, to you know, to have to have 110 kilos sitting on the rail. I mean, we want this boat to be used by everyone. Um, and we want this boat to give everyone an opportunity to perform at their, at their highest. So, yeah, look, the design of the, of the Far X2 very much caters for every possible person that uh, sails boats. I'm sitting on the deck of the mock-up of the boat and uh, we uh, uh, basically built the one-to-one -one model so we can put all the gear on the boat, test it, feel, feel like it's going to work and then and actually get a real-time, real-life feeling for the systems. It's all good and well to sit in front of a computer and design things. And I know of many instances where you know, we've had something designed uh, and the engineering works and positioning works and everything works, you've got to use it. And for some reason, it's just not quite right. Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that there's no place for you know, um, that type of thing because you know, we all know that computers and the, and the people that drive them are super intelligent and I have up the utmost respect for it. But in this boat's case, for instance, the next process for me is to uh, put the uh, put the whole all the fittings on the boat, and then I'm going to actually tilt it to 15 degrees, and I'm going to have the boat on an angle, and I'm going to have everything. So things like foot chops, uh, you know, where I put my uh, placement of angle, where I put my, um, you know, where I put the, uh, the the beveled corners in the cockpit, and all that sort of stuff is all going to be based around where my feet go when I'm sitting 15, 20 degrees on the boat, on the hard, on a piece of wood. aspect of having a one-to-one -one model is that people get to touch and feel it. Um, they get to come down and sit on it, they get to come down and uh, almost be a part of the project and uh, again from experience over the years, uh, you know, when I've, so when I've sold, uh, when I got the uh, mini project up and running, you were talking to people until you were blue in the face about the project, about what we're doing here, what we're doing there, it's going to have this, it's going to have that. And it wasn't until I got that first boat on the water and I had people flying into Valencia in Spain and actually going sailing on the boat that bang, all of a sudden I sold 14 boats.